doesn't know doesn't know I'm Beth and I'm going to be chatting to you a little bit about a little bit of the Bible that I absolutely adore and which is Mark 1 20, verse 29 to 39 which is when Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law and I feel that there are points in this that can relate to walk the wilderness 21 and that we can take from this so this reads as soon as they left the synagogue they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and began to help her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, people brought to Jesus all who were ill and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many with various diseases. He also drove out demons, but he would not let demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. No, Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, uh, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. So that's Mark chapter one, verse 29 to 39. I believe there are three key points that we can take from this that are relevant to Walk the Wilderness 21, and I think that are real. So my first question is, my first point, which I've phrased as a question because I'm me, <laughs> is why did Jesus not stay and heal more people where he was? Jesus knew, knew that there are more people that need help outside this little village, like, you know, whole of Israel, quite a lot of people that need help. So what he did was he wanted to spread himself out. So he wanted to show more people who he really was and that, obviously God was Lord of all. This could relate to us as we could be doing great things in our homes. So we could, you know, I could be doing the washing up, I could be, be hoovering the stairs. Doesn't happen very often, but I could be doing great things. And actually we should be doing more than that. Like, you know, I shouldn't just be being a good daughter, daughter to my parents inside my house. I should also be, you know, praying for my friends, talking to my friends about Jesus, Jesus, you know, praying for strangers if I see them in distress in the street, you know, actually we should be doing more than that and we should actually be kind of on fire and doing more things, not just the things in our comfort zone. So that's number one. And actually, it's not just people we know that need Jesus, it's everyone. My second point or second question is, why did Jesus stop and pray before he went? So like, why did he just wait and then not go straight away? I feel this is important to us again, as actually Jesus prayed, Jesus went to pray so he could chat to God, so he could chat to his father um, about what to do next, so his fa so he's almost giving himself self to God, to, so he is God, but you know, he's giving himself to his father and going, God, wh God, father, where should I go? And actually, we need to do that. We need to be able to go, God, what street am I going to walk down today? What am I going to need to do? We should let God lead us. Like, you know, we should give ourselves up. We should almost say, Lord, I'm yours. Where do, where do you want me to go? And we should follow, even if, it's, even if it's not the street we were planning to go down. We should be able to change our plans for God. This relates to something my chaplain um, at school says, because I go to a Christian school, so, I have a, so there's this lovely lady there there this lovely chaplain and she always says to me we have to be open willing and follow so we have to be able to go to different different places that god has planned for us that might not have been in our plan but we're in god's plan and i think that's something really key that we need to be able to do my third and final point from this is what other things did jesus want to do other than heal people so he wanted to preach save them and help them understand their mistakes as well for me, this is a reminder that we always need to come back to God. So even if, like, you know, we're doing all this great stuff, we're doing all our walks, we're being really great at home, and we're being really good, like, followers of Jesus, which I'm sure many of you are, and I try to be, might not be all the time, but, you know, I try my best. Actually, 
we still all need to come back to God. Like, you know, we, we make mistakes all the time when we don't realise we're doing it. So I believe when we want to do our prayer walks, we should always come back to God. So we should always actually go, God, I'm sorry for everything I've done today. Day can I have a new start tomorrow? And we should come back. Because actually that means that the Holy Spirit can live inside us more. And that means we can, you know, change lives. So I feel that's really important. And leading on from that, not particularly in the verse, I just want to remind everyone of a few things. That actually everyone, every one of you um, who's listening to this or watching it or whatever, you're qualified to talk to people about Jesus. You are. Like a big thing I see with my friends, some of my other friends who are Christians, is they go, Beth, like, you know, like, can I pray for someone? Can I do this? Can I do that? And the answer is, yes, you can. As Mike Fallop actually quite funnily said, um, actually, you need to be two things to pray for people. You need to be able to breathe oxygen, which I'm sure we all do. And we need to be Christians and believe in God's God. So you are qualified. You are good enough, n- good enough, no matter how young you are, no matter how low your self-esteem can be or whatever sometimes, remember that you are good enough. And leading on from that, I just want to pray for you. Dear Jesus, thank you for the Walking in the Wilderness initiative this year. I pray that everyone that's taking part would know how much you love them and know how much you care for them. And I pray that you would bless them and your Holy Spirit would live inside them really strongly. And I pray this would emulate to people, people, and I pray people's lives would be changed because of it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy your walks.